Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Lab. So, this is, I think, almost the last chapter of Selenite. Almost, we have covered most of the core concepts of Selenite. How to apply a weight? What are the different weight conditions are available? And do they provide any generic methods or existing methods? Like, it's very, very straightforward. The default explicitly weight in Selenite is 4 seconds. Remember this thing. I'll show you the documentation also. So for example, let's say I'm opening this application, launching this URL and the application is launched. And then I'll do one thing, I click on login here. And when I click on login here, you can see the page is getting loaded and it takes some time around three, four seconds to display this page. And by the time, uh, let's say I want to enter some value over here in this particular text field, let's say I want to enter Naveen, something like that. And then I want to click on sign up, right? So how to do this? Without wait, if you try to click on this Naveen over here, Selenium might give you exception that no such element exception or something like this same thing let's see what happens in selenite let's see this page is coming after 10 seconds so we have to provide a dynamic weight explicitly we have to wait for this element and once this web web element or text field is available we have to supply the value here right and uh, i launch this application i click on login here so login here is a partial link text i can use it instead of writing this entire text here so i can quickly create this a dollar by dot a partial link text and this is a partial link text that I'm passing dot click okay and after that I'll just directly launch I come on this particular page and then I'll inspect this guy and without wait I'll try to enter something over here so here you can see this is my DOM and uh, let's see I can directly use by dot name email so I'll say, okay, fine. This is my uh, dollar by dot uh, name and name of this field is this. And then I'm saying, okay, that uh, use a send keys method and pass, for example, I'm passing Naveen over here. Will this work? Let's see. So run as a uh, test ng. See, it's clicking on this and by default, it will wait for four seconds. So within four seconds, this element is uh, visible over here. But for example, let's see. If you do the exactly same thing in Selenium, because in Selenium, as such, we don't have a default timeout over there. So, or default time is available. So, in that case, in Selenium script, it definitely will fail because you have to explicitly wait for this particular element. But for example, this element right now is coming within one or two seconds. But what if it's coming within uh, five seconds or 10 seconds in that case? So, we have to explicitly wait for it. So, after clicking on it, what exactly I'm going to do that? So, first of all, I'll do one thing that uh, this. Uh, web element i'll store because i'm going to use this particular web element again and again so i'll create a selenide element way here okay so we know that instead of web element we have to use a selenide element which is email is equal to this okay and uh, and then i'll be using this email dot send keys instead of using this what exactly i'm going to do that email dot and then there are number of should methods are available so these are the assertion inbuilt methods are available which are built on top of explicitly weight on built off top of web driver weight and the fluent weight so here you can see that should checks that element meets all given conditions so you have to put a condition over here if saying if element does not match the given condition immediately waits up to four seconds until it meets the condition it extremely useful for the dynamic content dynamic content means which takes some time uh, to be displayed on the page or to be present on the page and you can overload this particular method also that see if you really want to give your inbuilt your own time then you can give a timeout by from from your side as well but default timeout is four second right now what i can do is that i can <clears throat> use this particular method second one and then what is the condition so you have to use this particular condition api and then simple write that okay what exactly the condition that you are looking for i am looking for that it exists or not so it's saying check if element exists or not it can be visible or it can be hidden right there is possibility that okay element is hidden it's available inside a dom only but this element is not available on the page so instead of exist we have better choice i can write that okay appear also i can write it and appear says that synonym of visible may be used for better readability so you can write appear also or you can write directly a visible condition also it means the element is visible on the page or not so let's say i'm going to use condition is visible and then within 10 seconds if the element is within 
uh, found within five seconds, rest of the five seconds uh, will be ignored. And then the should, what exactly it will return. So should method, what exactly it will return, it will return a web element. And then after that, what you can do is, first of all, that email dot should, what you have to do, you have to uh, import this thing. Let me just tell you one thing. The duration, you have to write it like this. So duration dot of uh, seconds, you have to write 10 over here, right? And then I'll simply write dot uh, send keys. In the same line, I can perform the action that I want to enter Navi. So if you read this particular line, email should be visible within 10 seconds. And once it is visible within 10 seconds, then you enter the value Naveen over here like that. So let's see, this is working or not. So first you create the web element and then explicitly you can put a condition like that. Instead of writing in Selenium code, we have expected condition, web driver, wait, fluent, wait, and all such things. You don't need to write such code here. You can directly write like this and then see it is actually waiting. And then this time it took slightly more than four seconds and then Naveen got entered over here and then there is no error on the console. Okay, now after that, what exactly I'm going to do that? So likewise, you can do multiple things here. You can write, see, if you see this condition dot appear, check, check for checkboxes, disable also, you can use that. Empty also, you can check that, okay, this particular text field is empty or not. This is also such a nice thing that if it is empty, then only you should enter the value. It's saying that it should be empty. So that is, these are the number of methods, hidden, focused, image, this element is image element or not, or sorry, uh, check if the image is loaded or not on the particular image also you can create that. So this is such a nice uh, feature is available in the form of condition. But let's see, I'll do one thing. I'll just uh, land on this particular page and I click on sign up once again. Okay, so let me just uh, create a web element for sign up. So this is a buy dot link text, I can use it. And uh, I'll do one thing. Sometimes what happens because of uh, this a pop up, right? The subscription to notification because of this pop up, we are not able to click on sign up. This is the behavior that I have already observed. So, normal dot click is not working sometimes for this application. So, we can use actions class dot click where we move where and then you click on it. So, I'll do one thing that uh, first I'm going to create a by locator for this guy. So, I'll write okay, fine, or directly I can use the actions also here. Action dot I'm going to use a move to element. Which element? I'm simple, right? by dot a link text and this is the link text and then you have to do what you have to do a dot click and then multiple actions that we are performing so dot build and dot perform here it means you move there and to sign up and then click click on it and when you click on it let's see i'll again uh coming on this particular page and i want to select this particular checkbox right so i'll do one thing that uh, this particular checkbox i'm going to inspect and let's see how to wait for this particular checkbox that this checkbox is selected or not, right? So I'll do one thing. First, I'm going to click on it. So this is terms by dot name. I can quickly use it. So this is uh, a locator. So I'll write, okay, fine. This is my selenide element. And this is, let's see, checkbox, which is equal to a dollar by dot a name. I can use it and the name is equal to terms. Okay, and then this particular checkbox dot click, I'm going to use it. It means you select the checkbox and then I really want to verify that the checkbox got selected or not. So I'll write, okay, fine. This is my checkbox a dot should. And then I'm going to use this particular condition dot and then see this is checked or not. And then I can use it like this. And then you can put a wait condition also that within this 10 seconds or 20 seconds or five seconds, uh, the checkbox got selected or not, right? So in this case, let's see it is working or not. So run as test ng once again. So after selecting the checkbox, it will check the checkbox got selected or not. So although all these inbuilt assertions are already available, you don't need to write any test ng assertion. This is such a nice feature is available. See sign up and checkbox got selected and then test is absolutely working fine. And I'll do one thing. Let me just comment it out. Now I'm not going to select the checkbox. It means I'm not going to click on this checkbox and then it's going to check the checkbox is selected or not. That's it. So let's see. You don't need to write any custom logic for that. The logic is already available in the form of method in Selenide and just simple use it and then you're good to see. It will back to this particular page, click on sign up and then see it's not terminating the program. It's going to wait for four seconds 
and then it's gonna give you error because the default timeout is four second is giving you error something over here that element should checked but it is not checked and then overall test is getting failed over here and then i'll do one thing i can really check that okay uh, the duration also i can pass duration of uh, seconds i can pass let's see it should be checked within 10 seconds and then after 10 seconds it will give you error it means within 10 seconds also if the ele uh, element or checkbox is not selected then you give the error then you fail your test but at least wait for 10 seconds right so again i'm not selecting the checkbox but it should not give you the immediate error it should wait for 10 seconds not for four seconds and then it should provide the error see this and i've been got entered then it will click on sign up and see this it's not throwing the error within four seconds it's gonna wait for 10 seconds and then after 10 seconds the exception will be thrown or error will be thrown see now the test is getting failed here after 10 seconds and on the console also you can see that uh, we waited for 10 seconds here timeout is 10 seconds right and uh, it's saying the element should checked but it is not checked over here it's there is a okay the sentence grammar mistake it should be checked it should be written like that okay and then the test case got and then again you just check it and then let's run it again see you click on this and then navid and then then checkbox got selected and then it got selected within a second so within a fraction of second and then not gonna wait for 10 seconds and then this is absolutely working fine here so likewise you can put number of conditions with should and then you can do a lot of good things over here for example let's see i really want to check that checkbox a dot and then you write should be also you can write it it's just a synonym of uh, useful for the better readability it should be selected it should be checked that also you can write it so you can write that okay fine the should be what it should be condition dot checked so which one is more readable this one is more readable right the should be uh, checked or you can write simple like should checked that also is fine so both are them are both are exactly same guys okay let's see some more implementation checkbox dot and then you write and then you can write should have also this is also you can write this is again for the better readability that okay should have checked that also you can use it and then you can write should not and should not be checked that also you can use it it should not be selected when you uh, see this is such a nice example we can check it like this let's see uh, I don't want to select this particular checkbox and let me just comment it out so when you uh, go to the sign up page right when you come on this page it should not be selected by default user has to select it so we want to write a test case for that how will you write it so I'll say okay fine that condition is what that should not be checked like this okay so let's see in this case it should be passed because this is what we are expecting that after clicking on sign up and after landing on the sign up page this particular checkbox should not be checked okay so let's see see so it clicked on sign up and then the test is absolutely working fine because this is what we are expecting that checkbox should not be selected or should not be checked over here right so this is something amazing feature which is available you don't need to write a complex logic and check the runtime property of this guy that value equal to yes or no because when you select this the value will be uh, value in you know in some checkboxes when you see this carefully once again the value is equal to yes and sometime it will be value equal to no if it is selected or not so how will you verify that so you don't need to write search logic or you don't need to check the dom structure every time so you just need to create the locator and that's it then then it will do it automatically internally so this is like amazing feature is available and all these are with the explicitly weight available now the default timeout is in selenite is four second and then if you really want to customize you want to give your own time then you can do that like this and then you can configure you can give your own default timeout also so what you can do is you simple write configuration not configuration this configuration dot and then you simple write the timeout is equal to let's see i am giving the default timeout in my application in my framework should be five seconds so if you mouse over it's saying that the default timeout in milliseconds it means the five milliseconds of default timeout that you can give the default time is uh, default value is 4000 actually milliseconds so what you can do is that uh, the timeout that you can give in 5000 
not 5 milliseconds, it should be 5000 milliseconds. And it's saying the default timeout is uh, 4 seconds here. The default value 4000 milliseconds here. Okay, you can give this property also minus decelenite timeout if you're running from the uh, Maven project or something like this through Maven command. You can pass this particular command line argument and then you can give the 5000 milliseconds as well. Now the default time will be for uh, 5 seconds instead of 4 seconds. And if you really want to customize it, you can pass this value. So for other elements, the default timeout will be 5 seconds for this element, for this element and for this element also. But for this element, for email element, the timeout will be 10 seconds because we have explicitly given 10 seconds over here. So this is the right way of writing the program in Selenite. You can give your own default timeout and that will be standard for all the web elements. And then if you really want to customize it, that also you can customize it. And you really want to nullify your default timeout, you can give nothing as well. You can give one second or zero second also. That also you can do that. Okay, so that's all for this particular video. I hope you love this particular series with respect to Selenite. We will try to create one page object model uh, with Selenite so that you will get to know how to implement the same features in your uh, framework as well and how to write the proper test cases for any application. Thank you so much guys. That's all for this particular video. Please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and God bless you all.